people who have uh, sleep apnea, they are at higher risk for having high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, and, and, and it's being studied even in pregnant women, whether it leads to preterm labor, early birth. And so it's linked to a lot of diseases, more inflammatory diseases, but definitely putting you at a higher risk of early death by having sleep apnea. Well, some of the symptoms would be um, daytime sleepiness, um, not being able to concentrate at work, um, taking more daytime naps, um, and also not being able to concentrate while you're driving. Women uh, complain of probably not being able to sleep versus a man where they'll complain of being tired during the daytime. Often, almost all people who have sleep apnea, they complain of snoring, but they definitely have the more difficulty with memory, fatigue, falling asleep when they're talking to people, falling asleep in meetings. And for people who have a lot of difficulty with going to sleep and staying asleep, they should have a set routine. 30 minutes before going to bed, they should do the same thing every night, whether that's just a, a cup of warm tea, whether that's reading a boring book, listening to some relaxing music, nothing stimulating. So no internet, no TV, 30 minutes before going to bed. It's just having something quiet that's relaxing before going to bed. And Try to improve their, what, what we call sleep hygiene. And that basically means to, um, to, to have a, set time to go to bed at night, set time to wake up in the morning on weekdays and on weekends, um, and not to drink uh, too much coffee or caffeine um, after 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock um, in the evening because that can upset their sleep cycle at night. Sure. And so I think that if you're having problems with your, your sleep and you're not sleeping a, a good six, seven, eight hours a night, you probably need to talk to your physician about it.